The sun blazed mercilessly over the Mojave Desert, turning the sand into a shimmering sea of heat. Leo trudged forward, his boots crunching on the gritty earth, a backpack slung over one shoulder. His sketchbook, nearly full of unrealized ideas, felt heavier than usual. He had come here seeking inspiration, a quiet place to reset his mind and find direction for his faltering art career. What he didn't expect was to stumble upon a piece of the cosmos. Leo paused to wipe the sweat from his brow, glancing down at the seemingly endless expanse of sand and rock. That's when he saw it, a dark, metallic glint half buried in the ground, stark against the pale sand. Intrigued, he crouched down and brushed away the surrounding dirt, revealing a jagged, otherworldly stone. It was like nothing he had ever seen. The surface was smooth in some places and rough in others, with silvery veins that glimmered faintly in the sunlight. What are you? Leo whispered, his fingers tingling as he touched the meteorite. It was warm, almost as if it were alive, and a strange sensation coursed through him. For a fleeting moment, he felt as if time itself had paused. His heartbeat slowed, the wind seemed to still, and even the sun's relentless heat faded into the background. The sensation was gone as quickly as it came, leaving Leo breathless. He held the meteorite in his hands, its weight more substantial than he had anticipated. It wasn't just a rock. It felt like a fragment of something much larger, much older. There was an inexplicable pull a whisper at the edge of his consciousness, urging him to take it with him. Back at his makeshift camp, Leo set the meteorite on a flat rock and stared at it, sketchbook in hand. Every time he tried to draw, the lines felt wrong, as if the stone was rejecting his attempts to capture its essence. Frustrated, he closed the book and leaned back against a rock. I came out here for inspiration, he muttered, and instead I find you. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and violet, Leo noticed the meteorite seemed to glow faintly in the dimming light. The glow wasn't just a reflection. It pulsed gently, like a heartbeat. That night, Leo dreamed of swirling galaxies and endless clocks ticking in harmony. He woke with a start, his heart pounding and a singular thought blazing in his mind. This isn't just a rock. It's a key to something beyond comprehension. Leo didn't know how or why, but he was certain the meteorite had found him, not the other way around. He vowed to uncover its secrets, unaware that this discovery would change the course of his life, and perhaps even time itself. Leo sat in his small, cluttered studio, the meteorite now perched on his workbench under the flickering light of a single bulb. Around him lay an assortment of tools, chisels, hammers, fine saws, alongside sketches and architectural books. The stone had haunted his thoughts ever since he brought it back from the desert. Its faint, rhythmic glow persisted, almost as if it were alive. He couldn't ignore it, nor the dream that had filled his mind with cosmic visions and intricate timelines. The idea came to him like a lightning bolt. A watch. Not just any watch, but a timepiece that would embody the vastness of the universe and the relentless passage of time. He had always admired the sharp, angular lines of brutalist architecture, the way it stood raw, unapologetic, and timeless. It seemed fitting for the meteorite's design. Leo began sketching, his pencil flying across the pages of his notebook. The design was stark yet elegant, inspired by the rugged textures of the meteorite and the bold geometry of brutalist buildings. The dial would be minimalistic, stripped of numbers or markings, leaving the wearer to rely on instinct to tell the time. It felt poetic, almost mystical, as if the watch itself would transcend its function. As he worked, strange things began to happen. Every time he touched the meteorite with his tools, he felt a subtle vibration in his fingertips. It was as if the stone resisted some cuts and guided others. When he made a wrong move, a sharp pulse would shoot through his hand, urging him to reconsider. The sensation was unnerving but oddly comforting, like the stone had a will of its own. By the third day, Leo was fully consumed by his creation. The hands of the watch began to take shape, sharp and angular like a blade slicing through time. The casing retained the meteorite's raw texture, its silvery veins gleaming under the studio lights. 
The meteorite seemed to cooperate, as though it wanted to become the watch. But as the days turned into nights, Leo noticed something peculiar. The glow of the meteorite grew brighter with each passing hour, and the pulsing rhythm quickened. At first, he thought it was his imagination, but the change was undeniable. The watch seemed to hum faintly, a low, resonant sound that only he could hear. Am I losing my mind? Leo muttered, running a hand through his unkempt hair. He checked his reflection in the cracked mirror on the wall, dark circles under his eyes, his face gaunt from sleepless nights. But the voice in his head, faint yet persistent, urged him on. Finish it. Time is running out. The closer he got to completing the watch, the more vivid his dreams became. He saw stars exploding, galaxies spiraling, and clocks ticking in perfect unison. One night he awoke with a jolt, the phrase celestial deadline echoing in his mind. He didn't know what it meant, but he felt an urgency that couldn't be ignored. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Leo stepped back from his workbench. The watch was complete, a masterpiece carved from the stars themselves. Its raw, angular beauty held a sense of mystery, as if it contained secrets waiting to be discovered. As he held the watch in his hands, the pulsing glow faded, replaced by a steady warm light. For the first time in days, Leo felt a sense of calm. But deep down, he knew this was only the beginning. The watch wasn't just an object, it was a key to something far greater, and whatever it was, time was of the essence. The Grand Hall of the Silverstone Auction House was alive with energy. Under glittering chandeliers, the elite of the art and design world mingled, their hushed conversations a mix of curiosity and anticipation. Among the featured pieces that night was Leo's meteorite watch, displayed on a raised pedestal encased in glass. It drew a small but growing crowd, its angular, brutalist design and faintly shimmering surface casting an almost hypnotic spell. Leo stood at the edge of the room, a bundle of nerves. This was his first time presenting his work in such a prestigious setting, and the stakes felt impossibly high. Dressed in his only suit, which was slightly too tight, he watched as collectors, critics, and enthusiasts studied his creation. Who crafted this? A voice asked, smooth and commanding. Leo turned to see a tall, impeccably dressed man with sharp features and piercing gray eyes. He exuded an air of mystery his gaze fixed on the watch with an intensity that made Leo's stomach twist. I did, Leo said, stepping forward hesitantly. The man's eyes flicked to him, and for a moment Leo felt as if he were being assessed, measured against some unseen standard. Remarkable work, the man said, his tone neutral yet laced with intrigue. Where did you find the material? Leo hesitated, debating whether to tell the truth. In the Mojave Desert he finally said. It's a meteorite. The man's expression shifted subtly, as though Leo had confirmed something he already suspected. A meteorite, he murmured almost to himself. Do you know what you've stumbled upon? Before Leo could respond, the auctioneer's voice boomed, signaling the start of the bidding. The room hushed as the spotlight turned to the watch. The auctioneer began with a brief description of the piece highlighting its unique material and design. Bids flew in quickly, the price climbing higher than Leo had dared to dream. Yet, his focus was on the gray-eyed man, who hadn't moved since their conversation. When the hammer finally fell, the mysterious man was the winning bidder. The room applauded politely as the auction moved to the next item, but Leo barely noticed. He was already being led to a private room, where the man waited with the watch in hand. Do you feel it? The man asked as soon as Leo entered, holding the watch up to the light. The pulse of something far greater? Leo nodded, his throat dry. I don't know what it is, but I've felt it since I found the meteorite. The man smiled faintly. This isn't just a piece of rock from space. It's a fragment of a meteor that passes near Earth every 300 years. Legends say it carries the echoes of cosmic events, supernovas, black hole formations, the birth of galaxies. And now, he said, lowering his voice, it's tied to something imminent. What do you mean? Leo asked, 
a chill running down his spine. The man leaned closer. In three days, the same meteor will pass by Earth again. Your watch isn't just a timepiece, it's a conduit, a key. And if we don't unlock its potential by then, we may lose the chance forever. Leo's heart pounded. The man's words sounded absurd, but deep down, he knew they were true. The watch had chosen him, and now it demanded something more. Will you help me? Leo asked, his voice barely above a whisper. The man's eyes gleamed. Together, we might just rewrite the course of time. The watch lay between Leo and the gray-eyed buyer, the air around it heavy with tension. The faint hum it emitted had grown louder, a rhythmic pulse that seemed to echo in their chests. It was no longer just an art piece or even a marvel of craftsmanship. It was a mystery demanding to be solved. We're running out of time. The buyer, who had finally introduced himself as Elias, said, his tone sharp. The meteor will pass in less than 48 hours, and if we don't unlock the watch's mechanism by then, we might never understand its true purpose. What do you mean by unlock? Leo asked, frustration creeping into his voice. It's a watch. It doesn't even have numbers, let alone a secret keyhole. Elias gave a tight smile, his patience clearly wearing thin. You're thinking too literally. This isn't about gears or springs. It's about the energy within. The design of the watch. It's symbolic, geometric. Every angle, every detail, it's pointing to something. The two of them pored over Leo's sketches and notes, as well as Elias's collection of star maps and ancient texts. It was an odd collaboration. Leo, the intuitive artist, and Elias, the analytical thinker. Yet as the hours ticked by, a strange synergy developed between them. The watch began to feel like a puzzle, its brutalist design hiding clues in plain sight. As they worked, Leo noticed patterns emerging from the chaos. The angles of the watch's casing matched the constellations that would appear in the sky during the meteor's passage. The faint glow of the meteorite seemed to intensify whenever they aligned the watch with these star maps. It's reacting, Leo said, his voice trembling with excitement. But how do we make it do whatever it's supposed to do? Elias leaned back, staring at the watch as if willing it to reveal its secrets. There must be a way to channel the energy. Something were missing. Hours passed in feverish effort. Leo's hands were smudged with graphite and ink, while Elias's meticulous notes sprawled across the table. The glow of the watch grew steadier, its hum resonating through the room like a heartbeat. It was as if the watch was alive, urging them to hurry. Finally, as dawn broke, Leo had an epiphany. The hands, he exclaimed. They're not just decorative, they're pointing to something. With trembling fingers, he adjusted the watch's hands, aligning them with the constellations on Elias's star map. As the hands clicked into place, the watch emitted a soft chime, and the glow intensified, filling the room with a warm golden light. For a moment, everything was still. Then, the light seemed to ripple, bending the space around them. The air grew heavy and Leo felt as though he were standing on the edge of something vast and unknowable. It's a temporal conduit, Elias whispered, awe in his voice. The watch isn't just a key, it's a bridge. But before they could fully grasp what they had unlocked, a sudden knock on the door shattered the moment. Someone or something had come to claim the watch, and Leo and Elias realized their race against time was far from over. The knock at the door reverberated like a thunderclap. Leo froze, the glowing watch still clutched in his hands. Elias stood, his sharp gaze flicking toward the door as it rattled under a second, more urgent knock. Who is it? Elias called out, his voice steady but low. No response came, only silence. Then, as if drawn by an unseen force, the watch in Leo's hand began to hum louder, its light intensifying until it cast long shadows across the room. We don't have time for this, Elias said, turning back to Leo. The watch is fully activated. We need to use it now before... The door burst open and two figures stepped into the room, dressed in dark suits and wearing expressions as sharp as their movements. Their presence radiated authority and purpose. The watch, one of them said, his voice calm but commanding. It's not meant to be used. Leo gripped the watch tighter. 
Who are you? What do you want? We're here to prevent a mistake, the other replied, taking a step closer. You don't understand what that device can do. I think we understand better than you do, Elias countered, and we're not giving it up. Before the situation could escalate further, the watch emitted a deep, resonant chime. The glow around it flared, blindingly bright, and the room seemed to fold in on itself. Time stopped, not just in the room, but everywhere. Leo blinked, his surroundings suspended in an otherworldly stillness. The figures who had stormed in were frozen mid-step, their features locked in surprise. Even Elias was motionless, his hand reaching toward Leo in alarm. But Leo could move. And the watch, its light now a calming, steady pulse, seemed to guide him. He walked to the window and looked out. The city, always buzzing with movement and noise, was eerily still. Cars hung suspended mid-turn, birds paused mid-flight, and pedestrians were frozen mid-laugh or frown. For the first time, the world was utterly silent. In this pause, Leo felt the overwhelming weight of existence. Every fleeting moment, every unnoticed detail, every hurried decision, it all became clear in this infinite stillness. The watch's hum deepened, resonating in Leo's chest, and he understood. This wasn't about power or control. It was a gift, a chance for humanity to step out of its relentless rush and reflect. Leo closed his eyes, holding the watch close. He thought of his struggles, his doubts, and the moments he had overlooked in his pursuit of something greater. He thought of the people he had met, the beauty he had ignored, the fleeting nature of time itself. When he opened his eyes, the watch's glow began to fade and the hum softened into a whisper. Time resumed, the room filling with the noise of life. Elias staggered back, the figures from the door suddenly looking confused. What? What just happened? One of them stammered. Leo smiled faintly, his voice steady but filled with awe. I gave us all a moment, a moment to see what we've been missing. The figures exchanged glances, but they didn't move to take the watch. Instead, they nodded solemnly and left without a word. Elias looked at Leo, his expression a mix of amazement and reverence. You did it. You found its purpose. Leo placed the now silent watch on the table. It's not mine anymore. It belongs to all of us. The auction house never recovered the watch, but stories of what happened that night spread far and wide. For Leo, the experience changed everything. He returned to his work. Not as a man chasing inspiration, but as one who understood the profound gift of time. And for those who had felt the stillness, life would never move quite the same way again.